All right, folks, here in Shelving, Arizona, as you can see today, we are doing a Thursday scrap run with steel, mainly steel today. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I might be bringing in my 57 hard drives here and see what, what their word is on that. If, if I can get a better price somewhere else, I'll go there. But last week with the Purdy truck here, the other one is just about finished up with Bulletproof Diesel. I'm going to do a whole episode on that. I realize it's not scrapping, but I think scrappers mostly are gearheads. For the most part, you know, we'll, we like to take stuff apart, putting it back together. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to make a special episode on that. But let's go see. So we, get, we got a little bit of steel here. We, anyways, and we got a little steel meal here. And we'll be running this on down. And like I said before, this truck is not as big as my diesel beast. So it fills up a lot faster. But anyways, let's get this thing filled up and see what we I get. Wanna give not the, not the, that this guy needs a shout out but one guy i listen to a lot is a guy named steve lato he's a lemon law attorney out of michigan this guy is really has some good stuff if you want to he's great because you can listen to him he and really cool interesting stories listen to steve lato i listen to him a lot when i load up when you see these in my ears that's who i'm listening to give him a listen really good stuff Alright folks here in Selvedine, Arizona, let's head on down to the scrapyard. As you can see, kind of a light load. Normally I don't do I don't do this. Normally it's just a straight shot down to the scrapyard. But there's this one restaurant that's been under construction for a while. And they've got a big pile of old lights and stuff. And I was asking them if they were giving it away. And they said, yeah, it's scrap. So I think since we got some room today on the way down, I'm going to run by, grab that, and I'll film it. And we'll run down to the scrapyard and see what all this gets us. And let's also not forget about the hard drive and if I can get a better price somewhere else I'll go there but if I can sell them there we'll try today let's head on down all right this is the place we'll see how much we can grab we're going to talk to them first though and make sure before we go start grabbing well, all right folks he's going to go check one last time make sure and we're going to grab as many as we can he gave me permission to uh, discard the plastic in the dumpster so that's pretty cool and we'll wait and see Well, that was a little bit of an adventure now, wasn't it? That was more lights than I thought. Good Lord. Okay, well, hey, we got these all loaded up. Couldn't get them all today. Probably come back another day, grab those, but what the heck, if you got a light load and you know where some is, pick it up. Now let's go to the scrapyard and see what this is. Well, let me turn down Mr. Freddy Fender. That's right. I'm going to hit the scale here. Oh, nobody in line, I like that. Uh, it's a nice, pretty full up load today in our smaller truck, the 97 Chevy here. We'll see where we end up. 5,800? Yeah. folks from salvaging arizona looks like i forgot to do a wrap-up so here we are on my phone anyways we had good good run today real good run we had uh, 820 pounds of steel i think several hundred pounds of that was that uh some of those lights that we uh i picked up on the way there uh that was uh six cents a pound 52 bucks and uh the hard drives i had 66 pounds of hard drives good god i've never had never had that before 45 cents a pound for just right right at 30 bucks for 82 10 so not bad. Thank y'all, folks. And let's go do some scrap. No, I don't think so. And as 
Sir Elton John so eloquently put it, the bitch is back. That's right, the diesel beast is back from Bulletproof Diesel here in Mesa, Arizona. Now, I, be, I will be doing a full episode on the bulletproofing of this one. Like I said, I know this is not this is a scrapping channel, but I think a lot of us are gearheads enough to where you'd be interested. So if you are, it's coming up in, in probably in a few weeks. But right now, area pretty close to my house has opened up. We're gonna go scrap there and we're gonna put this beast back to work. Let's go. All right, first neighborhood, first couple of piles. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. I found a set of these a while back and they worked. We'll, tr we'll treat these with a tad bit of kid gloves. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if they really make the trip. You know, it's not often that what's it says on the box <laughs> is what's in the box as a scrapper, but in this case, that's the case. We done got us a microwave. Oh, wow. <laughs> Again, should we start taking bets, folks? Of uh, whether or not I wind up with my clippers at the end of the day? <laughs> There's its first ride on the side rails there. Okay. Little box, okay. Got a few things in this one. I'm seeing a lot of wire cabling, but I'm not seeing metal. There's electronics, breakers. Eh. Okay, there's another one. It's weird. There's like all these odd wires sticking out. Good wire, not bad. Well, there are a few huge piles on this road. We'll see what we got here. She sounds like a butte, doesn't she? Purr and like that 6.0 should purr. All right, all right. A bit of aluminum, flashlight. Oh. Okay, it's a big pile, and as you can see, we are in a very nice part of town here. Man, what is this thing? Oh, that thing is heavy. On volume alone. And the fact that light fixtures are sticking out is worth stopping. A ceiling fan! No way! They really try. What the heck? <laughs> what is that? Okay. Two ceiling fans. We'll take a quick look there. Quick look, quick look. There. There you go. Alrighty, Paul. <laughs> I think I remembered my clove hitch from Boy Scouts. Did I do it right? <laughs> the rack is back. Yay! Oh, huh. oh, aluminum. All right. A coat of arms. <laughs> Looks like that. Yeah? Oh boy, watch out. Watch out for me now. Okay, this one is worth looking at. Toaster oven. We do. Okay. You know, last time I wasn't cutting cords off as I went kind of as an experiment and yeah you you need to <laughs> it was it was a big you no know, they're just sitting out there when when they're connected it's just an enormous tangly mess so okay that's a little heavy well there's a little bit of metal there it's insect killer one box with some things sticking out there it is okay oh wow okay well, this looks like all metal. I mean, I'll be, I'll be taking the whole thing, it looks like. Remember My dad had one of these. My dad was a welder. I used to find these all the time in the garage. There's brass and all that. Cool. Well, let's quit reminiscing and start throwing. How's that sound? All right. Well, all right, folks here in Salton, Arizona. Got the Scrapper's Delight, or Scrapper's Dilemma, as some might say. Uh, the breakdown. Breakdown, go ahead, give it to me. We're going to be putting this on high speed. All this stuff getting busted down.
right, folks, I think we're going to call it here for a night. <laughs> okay, uh, well, I started out with some little minor things here and ended up with this. What turns out to be a 1984 three projector screen. The old three projector ones, you know, you know from back in the day, those ones that weighed a ton. I uh, found this out there, and boy, was it an adventure taking it apart. Let me tell you, um, what. <laughs> Not just from this, but just all the steel shred, these massive amount of boards, uh, aluminum, stainless steel, just tons and tons of wire. This I would probably toss a steel shred. And then the yokes. The yokes on. Uh, yep, the bad jokes are coming, folks. Anyways, here are the yokes. Good stuff. Nice. The red gold nowadays. Hope you all enjoyed this. I did. I, I find this cathartic. I like doing this. This is fun. If you like this, Keep tuning in. Let's get back to what we were doing. Uh, this might be a bunch of yard stuff, but we'll see. Damn, it folds right up. And then, in you go. Sorry, folks, I keep forgetting to turn on the camera before I get in here. What is this? Anybody know what this is? Take one, complaint department. Please take a number. Someone will be with you as soon as possible. What's this? I'm gonna control. With this, I'm gonna control your life. Do Do you have some here? Yeah. Do you want Do you want to pull up? Just back in, or? Yeah. Uh, come and show you. Okay. Uh, let me grab my truck. I don't want to leave it sitting out there. What you got, man? I have a for a if you, yeah. If you want to, uh, if you want to grab one end, I'll grab the other end. Okay. Yeah, I drained the oil. Here, what's the sound of? Uh, 2005 Toyota Corolla. That engine went bad. Yeah, the cylinder head, the, the gear broke. Okay, I think we'll put it right there. All right, I'll block that in with some other things. Okay. I, I, I went by and the guy said he wasn't gonna scrap it and then he said, he just called me back over. I'll never use it. <laughs> okay, it'll go off. It'll find a new home at the scrap yard. He's realistic. <laughs> I've done the same thing, you know. You see something, you think, oh, I'm gonna do something with that, and then you realize, I ain't gonna do a damn thing with that. <laughs> oh, darn it. Well, folks, I, uh, that right there, that girl there, uh, she was a fellow YouTuber. She delivers Amazon now. She was Diving with D. Diving with D was her uh, channel name. She said she hasn't done it in a while, but she said that she used to go out and go behind dumpsters and do all that kind of stuff. That's cool. So I'm going to check that out, Diving with D. If y'all want to check it out, I'm going to. I haven't seen it yet. Well, I'm not entirely sure what this thing here is. Let's see. That's a light box. Only you don't find these inside home or in front of houses. But hey. Kitchen sink. Yay. Some lights, looks like. This one almost got me there. All right. What are these? It's like a stand-up table of some sort, or a sawhorse, something like that. You can see a little something there. Oh, okay, a little. Huh? You know what? I'll doctor it up when we get back. That is, it's homemade. All right, let's see what we got. Char. Check the boxes. Copper, copper. Look at that. Big old zip ties. Heck yeah, why not? Copper. Little bitty bits, but red armor oil cleans and protects. I'll take oil every day. Let's see what we got here. What is this? I think. Coffee maker. Oh my. Another one. Clippity clip, and we walk away with two cure eggs. Okay. Well, it's an old antenna. <laughs> well, you don't see those very often, now, do you? I like when I see lots of totes. Okay, a lot of camping equipment. I'll take this old Coleman. Wow. Whew. Man, you don't see those much. That reminds me of Boy Scouts. Let's 
set. Yeah. Bungees. Yeah. Uh, I know. I know what that is. <laughs> That's a toilet. We ain't doing that. Wrangler. No fault denims. Or my son-in-law is in the vintage clothing, so I think I'll like that. Like I said, it's always worth checking drawers, even though 99.9% .9 of the time they're empty. That'll all go. Let's see what's in the totes there. We got some light fixtures. And uh, I don't know how to blur yet, so there's stuff in here that <laughs> I, I may be cutting. I may be cutting a lot on this one because this bag is full of porn. So if you see me jumping around a lot, that's why, because there's wires and porn in here. <laughs> why? Got those. Okay, take that. Told by it thinking it's just a cabinet, but I thought, oh, what the heck, we'll have a look. And yeah, it does. Love me some wire. Huh. Got just one, but we got us two ceiling fans. Quick street surgery there. That one. Oh, another one. Thank you. I, I was gonna put those in the boxes. That would be very nice. Yeah, I always do that. Thank you. Yeah. Yep, I take these apart, take the motor out of them, go right there, go right to the scrap yard. <laughs> of course, yes. There you go, right there. And I will take these, thank you. I'll grab those too. There you go. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. A little plastic dishwasher there. Sometimes you pass them up and you gotta back up. <laughs> See, there you go. Shoot it aluminum. Folks have been awfully friendly today. I like that. It's been very nice. Oh, we got the old trampoline. Well, not as much metal this time. Usually there's a whole bunch more. Oh, you got some more? Yeah, give me a minute. Okay, cool. Oh, there you go. I was just saying, I was thinking, whenever I get these, there's always a ton of metal. I thought, man, there ain't much metal here today. <laughs> but thank you. Our steel meal. Thank you, sir. It's a brand new tailpipe, never been used. Really? Yep, still got the tag on it. Wow, well, you don't see that often. Oops, almost passed this one up here. Again, big old boxes, never know. A little garbage disposal. A little bit of wire. The volume below on that one's worth looking into. Okay. Okay, so we got this. Thank you. Mind if I pick, mind if I pick through or? Yeah, go for it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, ceiling fans. You're a little too large. I'll take a truck full of ceiling fans and electronics all day. Dude, that's a funky looking one, isn't it? Oh yeah, huh. all the brass. Dirty brass, but hell, brass on the last. This one's definitely a lock clean out here, or a lock change out. Normally I wouldn't do this, but I am. There's a lot of brass bits in there, and that's not that much trash, so we'll just pick it out when we get home. Right, that was good. That was really good. We're gonna go through that stuff. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay, we got. Oh, got us a little Arizona special hanging out here now, isn't it? Saw. Okay. 
full. Yeah. Yep. Always take the spray paint that one. Never know. What's he gonna need? Generac. For the Briggs and Stratton mower. Oh, that's cute. Dominic Ashton Haven 15. That's cute. Why throw that out? Why throw that out? I don't get that. I'm big on memories. I really am. But I am definitely one for not throwing away memories. And boy, do I find a lot out here. I definitely am saving mine for my children. So hopefully one day they'll look back and see their crazy ass grandpa who used to drive around and pick up stuff on the street. <laughs> you got us some car parts. Hey, mind if I grab your uh, car parts there? Thank you, sir. I will load them up. He did one hell of a job, man. <laughs> you trade out the, all the axles and everything? Huh? Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, this good heavy metal. Okay, looks like it's TV day here at this place. <sighs> so, folks, I've said this many times before, just the mix of suburbia and farms. So what happens a lot was, like I said, these were old farms. And so this was like the main farmhouse and then behind it was the farm. So a lot of times what you see is the farmer kept this big swath, swath, swath of land like here and then sold it off to suburbia. So it's pretty cool. So you start out the neighborhood with the old farm and then you got the suburbia. I think it's pretty cool. I really do. I like these neighborhoods. Well, all right, folks, here we got a nice quiet place here to sit. We're going to do a PD story time, PD story time. Yes. And today we're going to talk about the police academy, not the movie, but my police academy starting in April of 1997 to August of 1997. Now the pre-hire process, that's a whole nother thing. That's uh, deal with that another one, but let's talk about the academy. Now it's called the Phoenix Law Enforcement Academy. That's where they teach you to be a cop. And one of the biggest things that they have you do there is running. And uh, I know when you see me, boy, Steve, you look like a runner. Huh? No, I'm not. I was not a runner. In fact, I prepared by running at a high school track and unbeknownst to me, they take you out at South Mountain <laughs> at, uh, and you run in the desert at South Mountain on the desert trails up in the mountains and up through and back. And boy, you want to talk damn near heaving. <laughs> uh, in fact, I remember the first day they, do, they, they did the mile and a half test which you have to do under, I think it's like 14 something. I think it's, it's been lowered since then. But, uh, and then they, then they took us right out to the desert. Man, I was, I was completely smoked. Absolutely smoked. This was 1997. So I showed up there. I was about a good oh, 20, 25 pounds overweight. And my, my ex Marine drill instructor uh, walks up to me and he looks me up and down and he says, boy, I bet you'd like a cheeseburger right now, wouldn't you? Bet you'd like a big old pizza with extra cheese, wouldn't you? But you look down, you can't see your feet, can you? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's exactly what he said to me. And he uh, he put me on a program to lose weight, and I lost that 25 pounds in the academy. So that was uh, ain't, ain't no PC firearms training. That was interesting. Uh, they uh, I was to shoot a uh, if you've seen in my other videos, I shoot a Glock uh, 22 model 40 caliber, no compensation, basic bare bones. In fact, we were at you could not install an aftermarket trigger, it had to be a full five pound trigger and it had to be bare bones. The only thing you could do to it really was put night sights on it and or grip if you wanted, etc. But farm training was pretty fun. I mean, you, you you really see who knows guns, who doesn't, and whatnot. And uh, you, you you fire your pistol, you and and they also had us fire a little shotgun, even though I was was never issued one that was pretty fun uh riot training <laughs> that was interesting <laughs> riot training basically they, they they had us all pair up and we got our shields and they gave one side tennis balls and the other side shields and the other side's throwing tennis balls and it's kind of funny i got a picture of it where there's two warring sides against each other i thought that was pretty funny um driver training boy that was fun driver uh let's hold off for just a sec here let's wait to see okay. past i don't know what about pd story time makes people want to go off for a walk and walk their dogs but boy i sure get it anyways driver training boy that was fun the driver training track is out it was way out on the west side of phoenix out by reclamation ponds where they let sewage water uh 
sit. <laughs> Boy, that was nice, especially when the wind kicked up. Oh, hey, there's a fellow scrubber right there. Look at that. Especially when the wind kicked up. Boy, that was fun. Smelled like just what you think it smelled like. Anyways, it was like a movie. You know, like, you know, like when, 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 when they show like the old cars and they, they, they take the tarp off and it's covered in dust and flat tires. That's exactly what those cars look like. Like nine, 92 to 96 Chevy Caprices covered in dust. And I don't, I don't mean it covered. They said, go out there, make sure they have gas, put spare tires on them, clean the windows and get them ready and make sure they have oil. <laughs> and then they took us out to the track and you do some crazy, crazy stuff. I'll go into that another day, but man, you do it's, it's the, the driving track is fun to get to, to get to drive like a maniac and get paid for it. I mean, come on, you, you, you can't beat that. I graduated the Academy at 92%. A girl beat me out by like 0.8%. I was almost number one academically. So, Hey, huh? Yay for me. Uh, last, last one. We'll, we'll end this with a little funny story. Um, being late to the academy is not good. <laughs> so you, you're brand new, you're on probation, you should, you are not late to the academy. Heck no. Well, one day I was, and it was a day that was a very important day. I forget what we were doing, but I was two hours late. It was toward the end of the academy and I was a straight, I woke up a full two hours and I, you've never seen me drive from Chandler, Arizona to South Phoenix so fast. <laughs> and I got there and I'm sure y'all remember back in the day, they used to put people's faces on milk or uh, mi missing children on milk jugs. Well, when I, when I walked into class two hours early, uh, just like in TV, you know, he stopped the class and he called me out and embarrassed me and sitting at my desk was a milk jug with my picture on it. Uh, someone had found an old milk jug and made a copy of a picture of me that they had from my ID and so now I was missing. He goes, you're missing. The punishment he gave me, I think it was, oh my God, push-ups, sit-ups, trail runs, you name it, thousands of them. It, it, it was insane and they're, they're, they're big on punishment there but that's how I was a missing person at the academy but no, it was fun. Uh, looking back on it, <laughs> sure it wasn't fun then but hey, that's PD story time for today, the uh, academy. Well, let's move on. Well, that other scrapper there passed uh, him up an Arizona special. Let's see if I can get it. Mm. Oh yeah, we gonna get it. There you go. Well, all right, folks here in Southern Arizona, let's do a wrap up. A lot of ceiling fans today, craziness, a lot of ceiling fans. I think five or six, a lot of wires, electronics, a lot of steel, good heavy steel today. And a lot of that, that, that brass stuff that I'm going to be going through right there, I really got, I'm excited to go look through that, see, see what all we got. But definitely got a really full load, glad that the, uh, the beast here is back. Also, ran into a fellow YouTuber. <laughs> How often do you run into a fellow YouTuber just out in the wild? A scrapping YouTuber of all things, uh, Diving with D was her name, and that that's just crazy. I, look, I looked at her, she, she hasn't put out a video in a couple years, but you know, give her a shot. Maybe, maybe who knows? N nice gal, real nice gal. But anyways, folks, thanks a lot. Thanks for coming along. We're gonna get this stuff all put away, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for coming. Bye.